What do board people usually do? Well, usually they write keyloggers. I'm going to show you exactly what malware um, delivery looks like if it's in the form of a keylogger. Um, I'm not including the whole process where this emails um, the log to my email. I'm going to leave that part out. I might throw that in at some other point. Um, but I'm just going to give you a basic rundown of the methods they use when they do such things. First thing we're going to do is go to C Sharp and we're going to go to the Windows Form app.net framework for C Sharp. Go to next. We're going to call this Defender. The reason we're calling it Defender is because we want it to fit in with the Windows 10 programs so it doesn't look suspicious. Just going to go ahead and close that out. I'm going to resize this a little bit just to bring it down. And I'm going to go under Build, Configuration Manager, and Active Solution Platform under New. I'm going to let it go ahead and do the X64. And hit Close. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is right click on this form. We're going to go to Properties. And couple of the first things we're going to do is tell this not to show in taskbar. So that false and we're going to have our opacity at zero. I'm going to be laying in some code as we go. I'm not going to sit here and type it out, but I'm going to lay in little patches at a time and show you everything you need to do to get it correctly working. So the next thing we're going to be doing is applying an ISO file to this. So when the program is running and it is seen in Task Manager, it's going to look like a Windows Defender program. Um, so we're going to go to View, Solution Explorer, and I'm going to right click on Defender. Go to Properties, and I'm just going to add an ISO that I already have. And as you can see, I have a Windows Defender ISO. Go ahead and close that out. I'm going to go ahead and close this out, and now we are going to go into View Code. And I'm going to do a quick little code cleanup just to get rid of all this stuff so it looks better. Things are coming together. So under your public partial class form, um, I'm going to be inserting this. Now we're going to in a little bit, we're going to deal with this logger thing, uh, the logger path. Um, before we get going, another thing I want to cover is that you're going to want to go to your desktop and create or wherever you want this a log file to be kept. Um, if I were to go here, I already have a log file here, but you would basically you would uh, you would right click, you'd go to new you just create a new document and you call it log or whatever you want it to be called basically. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to right click onto this and you're going to go under properties and you would you know go under location. This would be your location and this is your log, your, your file name and it's txt. So you're basically taking that information and you're asserting it into here so it knows where to, to log the file when it's complete. Um, so I'm going to go back into this now. Um, Go under my 
public forum. I'm going to go ahead and drop this in. I don't want you guys to freak out because this is all flashing red. We're going to go to our form now and uh, we are going to double click on our form and go back into our code and insert this little bit. The only thing we really need to put in is this right here. But what I'll do is I'll just put all of it in. Do, 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 do. All right, so the next step we are going to take, that we have that done. These are global hooks that we're basically creating. Um, it's to hook your keyboard, um, and that's what all of this section is going to do, basically. tutorial is to kind of give you an idea exactly what these people who are designing malware um, are doing when they're creating their malware. Um, I'll go over and explain some things to you guys after I'm done doing all this and how everything works. Okay, so as you can see, we have a lot of shit going on here. I'm going to go ahead into here, and I'm going to click this on, and I'm going to tell it to use System Runtime Interval Services. It's going to clear up a lot of our problems that we have going on already. System text. As you can see, a lot of this is already starting to go bye-bye. This is going to do I.O. or diagnostics, I should say. Um, up here, address of Streamwriter, which this should be your I.O. Yep. Alright, so now we're going to go up here and deal with this little squiggly under here on this return. Um, what it's basically um, doing is telling me it's unreachable code that's been detected. And uh, What we're going to do is we're going to um, go ahead and go under Suppress and I'm going to go under um, severity and I'm going to just put silent. And that will make that go away. And this logger path, as I said, we'll go ahead and deal with this now. Do, do, do. Tell that silent as well. So I'm going to go ahead and go on my uh, desktop and create a 
I'm going to go ahead and go on my desktop and create a, uh, a log called logger. And um, we're going to go ahead and run this. Just going to pull this over here. I'm going to go into here, change this code a little, put logger. So now that we've changed this to match our log file, our logger file, text file that is on our desktop, we are going to go down here <clears throat> and yours should look like this right now. I want you to go ahead and I want you to uh, just go ahead and put two of those lines into here. I don't know why I pushed over there, but I want you to black it out so it looks like that. In fact, the only thing you need to keep in here is just this. Like, if you guys wanted to get rid of the rest of this, you can. Um, it's really not needed. Um, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go down here and we need to consult our stream writer. And we need to make sure that we change this to logger as well. Now, I need to explain something to you. You guys are obviously going to have to change your file path here because your computer's name is in Justin Ross. Um, whatever your, your file, if you right click on your file path on your desktop, say you go um, here and you go to properties, it's gonna say your name, whatever your computer's name is right here. So you're just gonna go in and put in that information. Um, but like I said, make sure that you change it. Everything is correct here and that it complements everything here, okay? Now, this right here, is going to give you a timestamp on when these events took place. Um, and I will show you now exactly how that works. You can write whatever you want in this section. Um, you can change the lettering. This is, you know, part of Scarlet security um, for parental features for when children, kids are using it in teens. Um, it keeps a record of, um, children's activities or whatnot. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and run this program. You're not going to see it when it starts up because we told it not to be seen. And I'm just going to go ahead and type um, I'll do numbers, I'll do whatever. Then I'm just going to go ahead and tell this to stop. And we're going to go consult this. As you can see, you can see everything that I just did. This was some previous stuff I did, so never mind that. This is all the stuff that we just did. And I'm going to run the program. Uh, hold on a minute. I'm just going to get rid of all this crap. Um, usually I get rid of it, and then I'll just uh, save it, and then I'll close this out. Uh, one thing I do want to do is I want to go ahead and run this, and then I'm going to go into Task Manager. Hopefully it'll let me show you what this looks like. So this is exactly what this program looks like, and it looks just like a normal Windows 10 program running. Um, so there you have it. Um, that's your keylogger. And as far as um, the whole email event shit, you know, that would all go underneath the bottom of here. Um, you would create an event that, you know, uses mailing to your email, Google, whatever. Usually Google's the best to go through or whatnot, but that conducts how malware writers create keyloggers and use them in payloads inside of pictures using steganography.